Hello, today we will speak about joints, operational processes with joint issues and processes and other related topics. Joints are connected, as we all know, with cartilages. Over time, these cartilages become more run down. Accordingly, in any of the joints, there is a cartilage. Let's discuss the joints and cartilages that go for the most pressure in the body. As a person ages and grows old, their cartilages also wither, and so the older the person is, the older the cartilage, which starts to fray. Not only is this related to aging of a person, but it may be because of physical trauma experienced in the past, like birth defects, as well as metabolic diseases and rheumatism, and so on. Every disease from the past will lead to fraying of cartilages and joints. At the start of the treatment, we start the conservative treatment, physiotherapy, thorough investigation of how the cartilages connect with the joints and potentially other disturbances. After all of the examinations and uncovering of the causes, we give the course for a prosthesis. A prosthesis is an artificial joint. It could be made from metal and ceramic components. In the standard deterioration, there are no such issues. But when those patients come, you need to be more wary. This patient has gone through osteopathy. As you can see here, when the patient was 50 years old, we already installed a prosthesis in them. This is how you can observe the top snapshots. There is a hip curvature. We need osteopathy and a very good plan of the work. Before the prosthesis installation surgery, it needs to be carefully prepared and thought out. In other words, the axis of it must survive. The preliminary plan is very important to end with a good result. After the left side prosthetic surgery, this patient was fitted with a classical standard prosthesis. The right side of the hip begins, we begin to see a twist. Out of the osteopathy, we must straighten the axis, rotate the hip downwards, so there is symmetry. As there is a narrow bone marrow is behind the hip bone, there needs to be a special type of prosthesis. And we, after looking at the results, we draw up a clear operation plan. After they create the plan of operating procedures, Using a severe loosening, we cut off the tip. Using the same technique, we take the hip bone, we return to the original position and install the prosthesis. There were preliminary snapshots. This one, however, is after three years. As you can see, the joint has fully come into its place. The limb disappeared and there are no other problems. And through this entire period, as the patient walked around with this joint, they were also going through physiotherapy. Always we were trying to strengthen their hip bone because they were not using it for many years. So this is one very small but important detail out of the operation period. In the period of three years, as you can see, no problems arose. Sometimes there are cases like this. This is also one of our suffering patients with obesity. There were four surgeries performed on him. Once, as you can see in the top glued part, the adhesive substance lasted and managed to swim out to the side. The lower part of the prosthesis broke and turned a little bit. Due to this, the patient once again could not walk. And at the top of the scan, as you can see, there is severe damage of the bone. Right at this point, there also needs to be a clear plan of procedures. This prosthesis must be taken out, then cleaned from the adhesive. And just as I showed you, if there is a bone rotation, it also must be solved. Here we decided to use allograph. There is the post-surgery scans. Here we used a prosthetic model. Cleaned the adhesive substance, restored the hip, and placed a long system model to install the allograph. There are the literal photos during the operation. 
these fragments that we took from the leg of the patient, like here, look, the leftovers of the adhesive substance that we took out. I've shown you the preliminary photos and the post-surgical ones as well. Of course, I want to say not all the entering patients are in such a bad state. Those are extreme cases, that is what we call them. There are also standard, lighter case. In a standard situation, nothing is too difficult. As seen in the photo, a standard case, if there is no need for adhesive, we must create a filling of the hip bone. We observe ephemeral antiversion and between them there must be an alignment from 15 to 20 millimeters. If this is done without the adhesive substance, we use a press fit. We need to correctly measure them. Another important factor, you need to measure the length correctly. I will repeat, if you plan to not use an adhesive substance, then very importantly, you must use press fit. This is very important for the hip bone. And so, I will again tell you why you use adhesive substance and why you can choose not to. We look at the state of the joints, for example, if the hip bone is in normal condition, then during the operation, will decide to not use adhesive. Many say that an adhesive process has no problems for several years, but in my view, I do not agree with this. If the state of the bone is not very great, potentially related to arthritic diseases, then it could be a cause of rheumatoid arthritis. With this in mind, there will need to be a systematic treatment. It is very favorable for the doctor to be very familiar with the instruments used in surgery. The type or design of the prosthesis does not matter, unlike the instruments you will use and the instruments you are used to. I usually recommend keramic hydrocypatic prosthesis they are adhesive-free, because I consider them better than others. That is my personal point of view. I still use keramic somatic processes, though I only recommend this option to younger patients. As when the patient walks with these processes, it may cause some sound. I have experienced this in my practice. This is why I recommend polytonic keramics. I had a situation where the keramic prosthesis broke, but this is very rare for the keramic prosthesis to break. To repeat myself, I experienced and witnessed this is only one of my patients. In work cancer in the hip, everything depends on your habits and what you're most used to. You must know it's the literal tool you will use during the operation. The best option is not opposing the tools you are used to. I always approach this literally starting from the beginning, concretely investigating everything and getting to work. And no matter how many processes devices I have implanted by now, I've never had it dislocate or slide. At the end of the operation, I will thoroughly, firmly and securely stitch the glute in its place. Only then I will close it. On the next day, after the operation, I will have the patient go through physiotherapy. I also want to discuss knees and knee joints with you. I want to say that we go through very effective surgeries on knees. As you may know, knees and hip bone processes must be good so that patients are still satisfied. If expressed correctly, knee surgery is not bone but cartilage surgery. In a knee surgery, the most important is to protect the connection. Unlike a hip surgery, the curvature of the knee must absolutely be corrected. In knee surgery, the curvature of the axis may need several resections. But you need to really try to avoid this. For these ill people, 
you could use a revised prosthesis. Here's an extreme case. As you can see on this snapshot, in the intersection the cartilage has stayed. It has been worn out likely against itself. We observed a severe curvature. For these patients, a preliminary plan of action is very important. This patient has been ill a while and has not walked properly in a long time. So we need to correct the intersection and straighten on the height pressure in the ideal direction. Here are some more literal shots. I say adults and elderly around the age of 70 to 75. As one of the knees is done, you need to do the second straight after. As a person with a healthy knee puts more pressure on the other, so it deforms even more. With age strength becomes limiting, so over time this begins to bother the patient. Here are our post-surgery scans. As you've seen the preliminary snapshots, you can see that the literal curvature of the knee is straight. As it goes for knee prosthesis, I first straighten the curvature if it's there. If it curves forward, I place the prosthesis on the back side. If the patient is in tile, then I must use a systematic prosthesis. Before the surgery, I must compose a graphic of axis length and go through all the necessary measures that all the actions are straight and correct. Again, for patients in their 70s, I recommend a dual side prosthesis, not on one side, precisely both sides. If they're not too old, you can install a one-sided in six weeks, you may do the second prosthesis. That is if the patient is younger than 70. After 60 years of age, the period after the surgery, the next day after the surgery, I start to check resistance. All the time I introduce crutches. You can start walking immediately. Consistent training is a must. This happens very gradually. After the adhesive substance dries, everything will secure a hold. I observed all of this carefully. Following these steps, you may bit by bit begin movement to fill it out. However, when it comes to the hip bone, I try to not use adhesive, unlike the knees where I always do. From my experience, with the different patients that come to me, I've come to a conclusion that it's best to use adhesive when we are concerning knee surgery. I will again say that any damage to the hip or the knee could be caused through childhood trauma, from birth defects to rheumatism. There are important factors to consider, but there isn't much difference between them during surgery. If at a young age there is a leg curvature, then this illness can be prevented preemptively. The time to place in some sort of measure, as to not wait for an adult age and the last moment. Recently, in this area, were successful. And things are going great. No one raises issues. I'm sure that with time we will have more even better methods of treatment for hips, knees and all connections in the human body. At this moment, unfortunately, these are our only available methods. Currently, we only have processes. They remove unnecessary problems from a person and return them to the past way of life. At this moment, I believe that this is the best solution for these issues.
hospital. It is the sourcing and spreading of uh, science. We have six different uh, hospitals in six different uh, cities of Turkey. We are a member of Emarlinak uh, family, and this is the, our department is the first uh, Emarlinak center in our uh, country. Here you see our radiation oncology team. Team is very important for uh, radiotherapy. This is our uh, Ankara team, Ankara Başkent University Department of Radiation Oncology team. Coming to the uh, evaluation of radiotherapy, role of imaging in the radiation treatment has always been very important. At the beginning of the radiation uh, treatments, we were using 2D dimensional uh, radiotherapy techniques in which we use some anatomical uh, bony landmarks for simulation of the patient. Then this is the, uh, the CT is uh, introduced to radiotherapy and uh, this is the very important uh, part of the radiotherapy. Then we will uh, we perform uh, two dimensional, three dimensional conformal radiotherapy techniques. And then uh, these techniques are developed from three dimensional conformal radiotherapy techniques. These are intensely modulated radiotherapy, image guided radiotherapy, stereotactic radiosurgery, stereotactic radiotherapy, and stereotactic body radiotherapy. Now MR is introduced to radiation oncology. The smart radiotherapy is MR-guided adaptive uh, radiotherapy, which we will be talking about soon. Başkent University Department of Radiation Oncology uh, has uh, all kinds of uh, treatment techniques in radiation oncology. We have a Marlinac Unity Machine, Versa HD, and High Dose Rate Break Therapy Unit. And let me explain uh, all of these uh, possibilities. Emarnak unit is first in the Turkey. Here uh, you see our opening ceremony. And Bursa HD is a, a high qualified uh, radiation oncology machine. It is a, a very technological renal accelerator. Here you see another wave. Bursa HD can perform all kinds of radiation oncology uh, treatment techniques, including intensely modulated radiotherapy, much guided radiotherapy, volumetric arc therapy, stereotactic radiosurgery, stereotactic radiotherapy, stereotactic body radiation, which we also call a stereotactic ablative radiotherapy. All include one includes all, no, all novel technologies in one device. Uh, the aim in the radiotherapy is to protect healthy tissues uh, located nearby the tumor tissue while applying higher doses to the target volume, thus minimizing the side effects seen our patients and increase the quality of life uh, of our patients. The advantages of first HD can be uh, summarized that it allows the tumor to be irradiated with high sensitivity. High doses can be administered uh, by a, uh, in a short time thanks to its high dose rate uh, option. Local control advantages uh, can uh, realize the overall survival advantages, treatment success, patient compliance, treatment cost, and early integration of systemic treatments uh, to the cancer uh, treatment. Protection of healthy organs with the most accurate calculation of the doses given the patient in the treatment thanks to its advanced uh, treatment planning system and uh, which all uh, result in decrease in uh, toxicity of the uh, radiation treatment. It has 160 multi-leaf collimators that protects healthy tissues and these uh, multi-leaf collimators has five times less leakage dose permeability thereby maximum protection of the healthy tissues, minimizing the risk of secondary cancer caused by leakage. Sensitivity in position thanks to the hexapod treatment table with robotic movement capability in six different dimensions on the systems. High dose rate mode can allow as fast irradiation and we have also ABC active breathing uh, coordinator. Uh, we can control the breathing during the radiation treatment. As uh, you can understand, it is very important for movable uh, organs, uh, including lung, lung and liver. We have a three-dimensional HDR brachytherapy unit. It is the last technology in uh, radiation oncology. 
It is very important in gynecological cancer treatments, and uh, it can perform image-guided adaptive uh, brachytherapy, which has been uh, shown uh, the overall survival advantage in cervical cancer patients, and it allows to decrease the toxicity related to radiation. Brachytherapy is an indispensable part of radiation treatment. It, uh, we can use brachytherapy in uh, male tumors, in female tumors, even in pediatric tumors, and all kinds of uh, organs, uh, tumors with uh, suitable indications. We have uh, MRI-compatible gynecological applicators. Uh, therefore, we can perform cervical cancer adaptive uh, brachytherapy, clinical gain, as uh, I uh, explained previously. It has overall survival gain, as shown in EMBRES uh, study, which uh, was performed by Chikestro Gynecologic Oncology Group, and it uh, also decreased the toxicity. Initially, we use uh, brachytherapy application in gynecological tumors in our clinic, then we can dispense the our uh, scope. Coming to the MRI macunity, it is a state of art in radiation treatment, which also uh, called as smart radiotherapy. What is smart radiotherapy? It is stereotactic MR-guided adaptive radiation treatment. It can, it can also called as MRI-guided radiation treatment or MRI-guided online adaptive radiotherapy, which is what is smart radiotherapy. Here you see our team from the opening ceremony of our uh, MR Lunar Unity. This is the development of our design, the initial phase and the last phase you can see here. And let me show you a brief video from our Yes, let me continue. What is the uh, clinical benefits of uh, MRI-guided uh, IGRT in radiation oncology? First, and the most important one is soft tissue visualization. Uh, during uh, radiation treatment, uh, some tumors cannot be clearly visualized uh, with uh, computer tomography. And with MRI technology, difficult image targets and critical structures become easier. Improved ability to adapt treatment is another uh, important advantage. And able to, to see the tumor, uh, ju not just the organ, we can apply the higher doses even uh, into the uh, gross tumor volume boost. We have real-time 2D and 3D imaging, imaging simultaneous with radiation. Since the device uh, contains a diagnostic MRI part and, and linear accelerated, uh, accelerator treatment uh, part, we can combine both diagnostic uh, and uh, treatment devices. We can uh, have simu imaging simultaneously during irradiation, therefore gating and treating without surrogates can be possible. New imaging tools, as you know, computed tomography uses X-rays, uh, which has uh, radiation, which is an ionizing radiation, and uh, which is uh, hazardous for human body. 
In Imalinak uh, unity, we use MRI guidance, therefore uh, we have no imaging doses. And we have also quantitative imaging, we have a uh, diffusion imaging option, therefore we can assess the treatment res response in during uh, radiotherapy, interfraction or intrafraction, even during interfraction, we uh, can assess the tumor response. This is very, very important for radiation treatment. IGRT image guided radiotherapy can be guided with ME EPIT devices, fluoroscopy, ultrasound, QV uh, computed tomography, uh, QV combium CT, but the most important one is MR uh, guided uh, IGRT nowadays. The first MR guided radiation treatment was reported in 2014. Uh, our aim, as I said before, the uh, re radiotherapy application. During radiotherapy application, we, our aim is to protect the health organs located nearby tissue by applying higher doses of target volume, thus minimizing the side effects in our patients. This is very important. Why RGRT? You can see here the prostate tissue. If you uh, perform conventional radiotherapy, you should have uh, more margins to treat the uh, true volume. But if you use RGR2, you can uh, narrow your uh, treatment margins. You can, because you can see the, uh, where is the tumor during the IGRT. The stereotactic radiotherapy device, this kind of stereotactic radiotherapy device, it was introduced uh, in 1965 with Gamonite and then uh, developed several uh, devices. The last technology is Imalinac and also I should say Electroverse uh, HD machine is a good option for stereotactic radio surgery. What is Imalinac and what, why it is important? Let me explain it. The biggest challenge in radiotherapy was to correct the treated target depending on the tumor movement and to protect the organs. MRNAC has been designed to overcome this challenge. Growing role of imaging in radiotherapy uh, is very important part because we can use in every part uh, of the treatment during uh, radiation, we should use imaging in every part. Let me explain. During the treatment planning, we should accurately delineate the uh, treatment volume, the gross tumor volume, tumor bed, and we should use image guidance during this treatment. And also during the evaluation of the treatment response, we should have imaging. And during the uh, treatment, uh, we should look uh, the tumor area and treatment localization and delivery should be uh, done with guidance of imaging. Therefore, in every part of the radiation treatment, we need imaging and qualified uh, imaging is very important. Can we get a system that integrates all these goals together? If so, what will be its main advantage? Imalinac unity is the, uh, it co is composed all of them. And it was also initially proposed in uh, 2000 in Istanbul in 19th annual Ostro meeting. And then, in, uh, because the most important challenge, challenge in MRLINAC is using photon in a magnetic field, and it was overcome in February uh, 2009 and uh, 2009, and installation of the first clinical MRI Linux system in the treatment room in Utrecht uh, University was initiated. In 2014, in Utrecht, uh, the machine is uh, installed. And uh, in 200, uh, in 2018, the Electra Unity MR NAC received FDA clearance to treat patient in the uh, US. Let me explain the different kinds of MR NAC uh, machines uh, that can be used in uh, clinic. We have uh, Unity Electra, MRDN, Australian, and Aurora radiotherapy, but the patient treatment can be performed just with Unity and MRDN. Let me uh, show the difference between them. The field strength uh, is higher in uh, Electra Unity 1.5 Tesla has a, a very clear uh, imaging quality. MRDN Unity has 
as I, as I explained before, 1.5 Tesla MR scanning combined with 7 uh, MV linear accelerator. It has high quality imaging, high technology Linux, and this is also isocenter of the MRI and the Linux is in the same area. Uh, what type of innovation has MR NAC brought to radiotherapy? Radiation therapy in cancer has been redefined with MR LINAC. The device provides soft tissue imaging with unprecedented precision during radiation treatment. Movements of the tumor and organs at risk are monitored real time. You can uh, real time track the tumor during the treatment. Therefore, higher doses of radiation delivered to small areas by minimizing damage to the healthy tissues around. MR resolution quality, that is, image quality is 1.5 Tesla, and the image quality is quite high. Moreover, it has functional imaging characteristics. It is capable of assessing responses between the treatment sessions. It is very important. We can assess the response of the treatment. We can give higher doses of radiation to the unresponsive tissue, unresponsive part of the tumor, which we call as dose escalation, and it can be benefit for several types of tumor, including prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, and so on. The most efficient personal therapy can be planned with thanks to this, uh, this method. This technology providing spatial radiotherapy means for each patient works with imaging, planning, and treatment procedure. Imalinac by three-dimensional imaging of the tumor allows us to live the C and monitor the anatomical movements of the patient during the treatment. We can um, observe the internal movements. We can track the respiration of the patient. Therefore, we can narrow our treatment fields and uh, we can give higher doses to the small uh, tumor areas while sparing the nearby tissue. How the MR LINAC works? Let me explain uh, the procedure. The imaging with the patient being taken to the treatment table daily changes with patient anatomy are identified with device MR feature. Device MR scanner clearly displays tumor position, uh, dimensions and shape with three different angles. Daily tumor changes are monitored therefore. During planning, we perform real-time uh, planning uh, and we uh, follow up the tumor. This ensures us rapid compliance with daily changes in the patient and immediately allows the fixed response in tumor. Planning is made to reshape to the radiation dose in real time. Here are uh, patients, you can see our patient with uh, colorectal cancer, uh, liver metastasis. Uh, treatment, Electa Unity MR LINAC, uh, which thinks it is in, uh, instant imaging feature during treatment, ensures a clear view of the tumor and healthy tissue with its soft tissue contrast. With its real time tumor imaging feature, it is a unique feature in radiotherapy as an important turning point in cancer patients' journey. Here you see uh, our uh, imaging during the treatment. We can track our patient in coronal. Uh, sagittal and axial waves. We can see tumors, we can track tumors uh, from these three waves. Let me explain the importance of uh, image guidance during the treatment. It is, uh, this, this patient has a colorectal cancer and uh, he has a liver metastasis. During the treatment, the patient respirates deeply and you see the tumor or the uh, treatment field uh, go in went inferior side, and uh, then we uh, we can see with this with MRI, then we uh, correct the position and uh, treat it the correct area. This is very important. In other machines, we cannot uh, see this because uh, we cannot have imaging during the radiation treatment because of the computer tomography uh, X-ray uh, uh, part. MRI treatment, uh, to re total treatment usually uh, we perform in one to five fractions, changing from patient to patient or the tumor characteristics. We can treat every day or every other day. For each fraction, treatment duration changes between 20 to 70 minutes. Why MR LINAC? It applies uh, radiation with higher accuracy to tumor region. Thanks to device MR feature, irradiation is performed by imaging tumor clearly, and we uh, saw this importance uh, in our previous uh, example of the patient with colorectal cancer, 
uh, liver metastasis. By this way, top level protection ensure with the surrounding organs. It provides the opportunity to shorten the treatment period up to one to five days, according to conventional radiotherapy, which allows us to integrate systemic therapy into the cancer patients uh, in a short time. It is very important in some kinds of tumors, uh, including the pancreatic cancer, which is a very systemic disease. Imarnina creates a new standard for spatial radiotherapy for patients, allows a unique treatment planning for each patient according to his or her disease, allows reshaping the dose according to the daily changes of the tumor, shape, size, and position, and the healthy anatomy around it, allows an adaptive radiotherapy for the patient. Uh, in which cancer we can use uh, emarlinac? Uh, we can use emarlinac in all kinds of uh, tumors with uh, suitable indications, and we can use emarlinac even in pediatric patients. Uh, we have growing evidence with uh, emarlinac unity. Um, here we see the, some examples of this uh, pu published. Uh, for example, uh, lung cancer. Uh, ad locally advanced pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer. We have some reports for, uh, again, pancreatic cancer. We have very benefits for these kinds of uh, tumors. And you will see the uh, one patient with locally advanced pancreatic cancer, the treatment plan, and the first fraction of the treatment, second, third, fourth, and fifth, you can see how the stomach can change during the treatment and bowel can move because uh, they are movable organs, we have internal motion and to overcome this motion and to, uh, to uh, treat the true area, we should see the tumor during the treatment and we can perform this uh, only by the MR guidance. Here you see our pancreatic cancer patient. Uh, she had a borderline resectable uh, tumor. We applied Neoadjuvan treatment. After four months of the radiotherapy, we had complete response. We can also have, uh, we can also treat uh, hepatocellular carcinoma patients, and we can use uh, stereotactic hypofractionated radiotherapy as a bridge to transplantation in order to prevent the um, local tumor progression during the waiting period. We have no grade three toxicity during this uh, treatment. It is very safe and effective treatment. As Bashkent University, we also, uh, write our experience. We can use uh, liver tumor, the MRI enough, we can use liver tumor. It is very important because liver is also a mobile uh, organ. Uh, to treat the true area, we should see the clear the tumor during the treatment. We have also, again, liver malignancy for uh, some reports for liver malignancy. We can also, we have also reports for gynecological tumor, prostate cancer, uh, oligometastatic disease. Here also uh, liver radiotherapy uh, is very important. We have uh, we, we have here a patient with colon cancer. Uh, we she he had uh, multiple liver metastases. The patient uh, was on uh, immune uh, immunotherapy, and we uh, applied stereotactic by the radiotherapy as immune stimulating uh, effect. We use uh, lower doses uh, to stimulate uh, immune response, it, which we call as uh, also as abscorbal effect of the radiation treatment. Here you see the second uh, tumor volume. Uh, here you see the uh, treatment images of the patient from uh, three different waves. Here is also a, a patient from uh, liver metastasis. He had also uh, colorectal cancer. And you see the uh, our imaging. Uh, we plant uh, five times six gray uh, radiotherapy. This is the first fraction. You see the uh, after the first fraction, you can see the, how the change, how the slow uh, uh, shrink the tumor. Uh, our uh, device has also tumor assessment opportunity between the fractions. It is also very important. Even during the treatment, we can assess uh, the treatment response using functional MRI. Here we have also uh, some rectal cancer ex experience. Uh, we can also use rectal cancer. 
we can also use it uh, rectal cancer, these are examples. In uh, breast cancer, it is a new uh, technology. We can use in the neoadjuvant uh, setting, uh, single dose SPRT in breast cancer, and then uh, the patient can uh, undergo the uh, surgery. We can also use MRDNAC for recurrent uh, breast cancer, uh, especially for the re-irradiation cases. Uh, we need to see the tumor during the treatment in order to spare normal breast tissue. Maximum dose radiation is emitted by targeting tumor during treatment. Since new treatment without targeting healthy cells only focused on tumor will assist with comp completing treatment without disruption patient's quality uh, living and this well leverage patient's harmony with the treatment. Each patient is unique. We, we should not uh, forget this and needs unique treatment. MI not due to this clear vision capacity, real-time tumor monitoring, and real-time adaptive radiotherapy characteristics provides a level of personalized treatment that was never been possible before. Thank you for your attention. Ülkemizin ticaret ve sanayi yatırımlarıyla olduğu kadar kültürel mirası ve gastronomisiyle öne çıkan şehirlerinden biri olan Gaziantep, sağlık yatırımlarıyla da dikkate çekiyor. ...1996 yılında faaliyete geçen Sanko Üniversitesi Hastanesi, ülkemize kazandırılan en büyük sağlık kuruluşlarından biridir. 600 yatak kapasitesiyle Türkiye'nin tek çatı altında en büyük özel hastanesinde radyoloji, nükleer tıp, kardiyovasküler cerrahi, organ nakli merkezi, nefroloji, hematoloji, tıbbi onkoloji, kardiyoloji, ortopedi ve travmatoloji, göz hastalıkları, kadın hastalıkları ve doğum, göz cerrahisi, Obezite ve Metabolik Cerrahi Merkezi, Üremeye Yardımcı Tedavi Merkezi'nde uzman tanı ve tedavi yöntemleri uygulanıyor. Merhabalar, ben doçent doktor Pelin Özyol. Sanko Üniversitesi Göz Hastalıkları Anabilim Dalı'nda öğretim üyesi olarak görev yapmaktayım. Klinimizde katarak cerrahisi, korneye ve oküler yüzey patolojilerine yönelik girişimler, vitroretinal cerrahi, şaşılık cerrahisi, göz çevresi ve göz kapağının hem fonksiyonel hem de kozmetik problemlerine yönelik girişimler ve glokom tedavisi yapılmakta. Ben daha çok kornea hastalıkları ve refraktif cerrahi ile ilgileniyorum. Sizlere kornea nakli ile ilgili hastanemizdeki süreçler hakkında bilgi vermeye çalışacağım. Kornea nakli, kornea hastalıklarından kaynaklanan görme kayıplarının cerrahi tedavisi olarak uygulanan bir doku nakli girişimidir. Görme kaybına sadece fonksiyonel bir kayıp olarak bakmak uygun değildir. Görme yetisinin kaybı yanı sıra kişide maddi ve manevi kayıplara da neden olabilmektedir. Korneanın saydamlığını altta yatan herhangi bir nedenle kaybetmesi kişide önemli derecede görme kaybına neden olabilir. Keratokonus, kornea enfeksiyonları, travmalar, yine göz içi cerrahileri sonrası gelişen korneal yetmezlikler kişide önemli derecede görme kaybına neden olabilecek hastalıklar arasında sayılabilir. Bu durumda ise kornea nakli kişide hem görme yetisini kazandırabilecek hem de yaşamsal fonksiyonlarını ödümlü yönde etkileyip hayat kalitesini arttırabilecek çok önemli bir cerrahi girişimdir. Bu süreçlerin en başından en sonuna kadar göz hekiminiz ve profesyonel ekibi tarafından titizlikle sürdürülmesi gerekmektedir. Bizler Sanko Üniversitesi Hastanesi Kornea Nakil Merkezi olarak etik kurallar doğrultusunda bu süreçleri yürütüp hastalarımıza en iyi hizmeti vermeye çalışıyoruz. Çalışıyoruz.
Kornea nakli süreci nasıl işlemektedir sorusuna cevaben öncelikli olarak göz hekiminin hastayı detaylı olarak değerlendirmesi gerekmektedir. Çünkü hastamızın kornea nakline uygun olup olmadığı ya da bu cerrahiden fayda görüp görmeyeceği titiz bir muayene sonrasında belli olacaktır. Eğer hastamız kornea nakli için uygunsa cerrahi süreçler ve hazırlıklar planlanacaktır. Kornea naklinde bozulmuş olan kornea dokusu yaşamını yitirmiş kişiden elde edilmiş sağlam kornea dokusu ile değiştirilmektedir. Verici kornea dokusu Türk vatandaşları için Sağlık Bakanlığı'na bağlı göz bankalarından elde edilmektedir. Yurt dışı hastalarımız için yine yurt dışı bağlantılı olarak kornea bankalarından kornea temin edebilmekteyiz. Tüm bu süreçlerin hepsi resmi süreçler olarak ilerlemektedir. Kornea bankaları verici korneyi elde ettiklerinde bazı özel testler ve bulaşıcı hastalıklar yönünden dokuyu taradıktan sonra bizlere yönlendirmektedirler. Kornea özel solüsyonlarda 7 ile 14 gün arasında muhafaza edilebilmektedir. Kornea hastalıklarının önemli bir bölümü korneanın belli tabakalarını etkileyebilmekte, diğer tabakalar sağlam olabilmektedir. Bu tip durumlarda genel yaklaşımımız sadece hastalıklı olan dokuların değiştirilmesi yönündedir. Böyle durumlarda lameller cerrahi uyguluyoruz. Ancak eğer korneanın tüp tabakalarında bir problem varsa penetran ya da tam kat derinlikte bir cerrahi uygulayabiliyoruz. Yine hastamızda beraberinde katarak gibi ek bir patoloji varsa her iki işlemi de aynı seansta uygulayıp hastanın görsel rehabilitasyonunu maksimum düzeye çıkartabiliyoruz. Süreç içerisinde verici kornea temin edildikten sonra cerrahi en kısa sürede planlanmaktadır. Cerrahiyi lokal ya da genel anestezi ile yapabiliyoruz. Anestezi tercihimiz sıklıkla hastanın genel durumu ile ilişkilidir. Cerrahi günü ise tüm ekip önceden planlanmış ve hazır bir şekilde cerrahi süreci tamamlamaktadır. Ameliyat sonrası hastamızı yakın bir takip ve tedavi protokolü ile izliyoruz. Hastamız stabilize olduktan sonra taburculuğunu en kısa sürede planlıyoruz. Ancak taburculuk sonrası da hem yakın takip hem de yoğun tedavi süreci devam etmektedir. Ameliyat sırasında ya da ameliyat sonrasında her cerrahide olduğu gibi çeşitli komplikasyonlar gelişebilmektedir. Ameliyat sırasındaki gelişebilecek komplikasyonları cerrahi öncesi hasta gözün iyi analiz edilip ve tabii ki teknolojik olanaklarımız vasıtasıyla minimize edebilmekteyiz. Ameliyat sonrası komplikasyonlar için ise yakın hasta takibi, tedavi protokolüne uyum ve tabii ki iyi hasta hekim ilişkisiyle önleyebilmekteyiz. Sonuç olarak kornea nakli işlemi ameliyat öncesi, ameliyat esnası ve ameliyat sonrası dönemde son derece titizlikle takip edilmesi gereken bir süreç olup tıbbi ve resmi aşamaları profesyonel bir ekip tarafından yürütülmesi gerekir. Uygun hasta, uygun donör kornea ve titizlikle çalışan bir cerrahi ekip ile bizler Sanko Üniversitesi Hastanesi olarak kornea nakli cerrahilerinde her açıdan başarılı sonuçlar elde edebilmekteyiz. Sorularınız için Organ Nakil Merkezi Koordinatörümüz veya Uluslararası Hasta Hizmetleri Müdürlüğümüz ile iletişime geçebilir, sorularınızı yöneltebilirsiniz. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, we are uh, our hotel name CNG Wellbeing Resort, and uh, CNG inspired by Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And CNG Wellbeing is located in Kadıköy region of Bodrum, and CNG have special private uh, beach. And uh, we are in three kilometers from nearest town, which is named Turgut Turgut Reis, and Bodrum City is 22 kilometers. And airport is 49 kilometers far away. 
And uh, CIG is designed as a luxury suite. And uh, CIG offers a charming view and combination of pleasure and well-being. And CIG is all the all year with different concepts, well-being, ultra-inclusive concept, and bed and breakfast concept. And CIG is the first uh, thermal hotel of Bodrum. And uh, thermal pool has uh, more than different 20 uh, different kinds of minerals. Uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, chlorus, uh, and it has uh, 34 and 36 degrees, and very beneficial uh, for rheumatisms, for skin illnesses, uh, for everything actually. <laughs> so, if you uh, have any question, uh, could you please uh, send the messages, and uh, my colleague will continue now. Hello, everyone. My name is Jaren. Uh, I am dietitian and nutritionist of CIG, uh, and uh, these are the slides. Um, Jada forgot to mention a little bit. Yes, yeah, sorry. And these are our rooms, um, and these are the other yes. ones which are uh, located in the back side of the hotel. Uh, they have very beautiful um, sun sunrise view uh, with the this full one. And um, yes, uh, I will mention about you uh, our health programs, uh, Master Detox, Raw Food Detox, uh, Anti-Aging Diet and Ketogenic Diet. The detox programs are our signature programs, you know. Um, detox is not just for cleaning your body and getting uh, out of your toxins from your body. And also it's kind of a fasting program. Uh, as you know, with the fasting, when your body in fasting state, your body uh, has more time to deal with toxins and uh, clean the liver and the kidneys. That's why we are using detox programs as a part of our health programs. And we prefer to combine them with uh, the proper uh, diet programs for the weight loss issue, for the healing, the relationship with the food. Uh, one of them is for the uh, healthy aging, anti-aging program. Uh, I will give a brief uh, introduction with every one of them, but another of them is the ketogenic diet, but mm, it's a special kind of ketogenic diet. So uh, it's, uh, it's different than other programs. Uh, if someone who has a resistant weight issues uh, and uh, if they have lots of problems with uh, weight gain, uh, we use ket ketogenic program as a uh, solution. Uh, for them, and uh, there, there are some contradictions with ketogenic uh, diet program, but if our guest who, who, comes us, uh, who comes to me, first I do an uh, initial consultation, like a 45 minutes, uh, 50 minutes, and then uh, we decide which program is uh, available for them, and uh, what is uh, really, what they are going to get benefits, feel the benefits from the programs, we will decide together. And uh, we are um, um, uh, making it uh, with rich enriched with the, uh, the spa treatments and the well-being treatments. So uh, we are uh, creating a roadmap together. And uh, what's our aim is to get rid of toxins or weight loss or uh, feeling good. Uh, yes, we are combining all of them. Uh, let me show you the. Uh, um, uh, basic instinct about uh, our uh, detox programs. Master detox program is a kind of juicing program, uh, very low calorie, like 800 kilocalories. Uh, and uh, during the day, you are getting all the things with um, shakes, wheatgrass juices, uh, spirulina. These are our superfoods mainly. Uh, we are making our shakes with uh, bentonite clay and psyllium husk. Bentonite clay is a very important uh, clay for uh, binding, it is binding the toxins in our body. And uh, with the help of uh, Angel of Water, we are getting rid of the toxins daily. Uh, daily. Uh, we call it colema. Uh, it's very, it's not invasive, very easy way to get rid of the toxins from your colon. And uh, these are the uh, the supplements we, uh, 
which we use in our master detox program. This is on the top uh, in the left side. Uh, you see the Cipiruna. We use the Cipiruna tablets in the morning time and uh, afternoon. Also three tablets in the morning, three tablets in the afternoon. This is our bentonite clay. Uh, we use, I, I told you, uh, bentonite clay is like a toxin magnet. Uh, it acts like a magnet in our body, and this is the uh, in the left column in the left side um, uh, the wheatgrass juice. We we are harvesting our own uh, wheatgrass in our hotel. We have a place, very close place. Um, we uh, every day freshly we are cutting our uh, wheatgrass and we are uh, making a juice uh, from them freshly when our uh, clients arrives arrives. And this is the, uh, in the right column, you see uh, the green juice. Uh, we are serving lots of green juice in our program, you will see in the next slide. Um, so uh, we are making it with apples, a uh, little bit ginger, lemon juice, uh, olive oil, and all dark green vegetables. Yes. Uh, and during the day, uh, with our detox programs, our guests can drink uh, alkaline water, detox broth, detox soup, and herbal tea varieties. Um, and uh, detox broth uh, is kind of a clear broth we are making with boiling all dark green um, vegetables and with some spices, anti-inflammatory spices. So during the day, uh, our client can uh, get benefit from four or five uh, cups per day. Herbal teas, uh, uh, instead of uh, coffee, we don't uh, um, provide coffee in, in our detox programs. Um, Instead of coffee, we, uh, we we want our guests to consume herbal teas because it they, it helps to the detoxification process of our body. And uh, at the end of the day, we are serving you a probiotic. Why we are uh, supporting you probiotic? We want to support your gut health. Plus, uh, because of the angel of water, um, we are losing both the good bacteria and the bad ones together. So we want to support the good ones, the good flora. Uh, that's why. And this is the full day program of our detox, master detox program. The day, as you see, the day starts at 8.30 with wheatgrass juice and Sipilna tablets. At 9 o'clock, we have shake. At 11 o'clock, we have shake. Uh, at 1 o'clock, we have green juice and electrolyte drink. At four, uh, 2 o'clock, we have another shake. At 3 o'clock, we have wheatgrass juice and Sipilna tablets. At 5 o'clock, another shake. And uh, you, you will have another green uh, juice and electrolyte drink. What is this electrolyte drink? Electrolyte drink is a mixture of Himalayan salt, uh, lemon juice, and alkaline water. Why we are serving this? Uh, because um, uh, when, uh, when our client comes to us, uh, they, uh, for the detoxification, we recommend uh, them to uh, uh, use the spa and sauna for to get rid of the um, sweat, I mean, by sweating the toxins from the skin directly. So they are losing the, uh, both the electrolytes from their body. So we want to support the uh, electrolytes also in, from inside, yes. That's why. And uh, we have another uh, detox program. Uh, why we are using raw food program? If someone who, who, the, who doesn't have any detox uh, experience before, raw food is a very good starter program for them. And it's very good for um, actually who is dealing with uh, to uh, consume vegetables and fruits. Uh, and we, we make vegetables and fruits very delicious and tasty. Everyone, re everyone really enjoying with the raw food program because it's a full day eating program uh, with the lots of uh, superfoods and green juices. Um, uh, it's also our signature program because we have a raw food specialist chef and he's preparing lots of recipes with uh, vegetables and uh, with the nuts, nut family actually. Uh, they are making lots of sauces with um, avocado, cashew, flaxseed. We are making flaxseed crackers. They're all delicious. I tried all of them. And uh, what's the main reason for the raw food detox program? Yes, uh, it's unprocessed, uh, uncooked. Uh, there is nothing inside, just food. Um, 
And you know, uh, when uh, when people uh, eat, I mean, if uh, people, um, some people are uh, eating lots of processed foods. So if they want to stop to and uh, introduce their body with the real food, it's a very good program to start. And we are serving. Uh, uh, digestive enzymes with this program. Why? Because the, co uh, the program contains lots of fibers, more than 50 grams of fiber per day. That's why. Um, um, and uh, because of the effects of the uh, antioxidant property of the raw food detox uh, is very beneficial for our body because it contains lots of phytochemicals and antioxidant molecules inside. Um, and let me show you the uh, rest of the program. Yes, this is the, another shot from uh, by me. Uh, unfortunately, we, um, we can send you the professional our raw food progress, but it's from my uh, camera. I'm, I'm so sorry, um, but uh, um, the slide was very quick for me. And uh, it's just that I ate two days ago, I guess. Uh, it's kind of hamburger with uh, flax seed crackers and the uh, uh, pesto sauces and, and the cashew sauces inside. Uh, yes. And uh, as you see, the day starts with morning boost kind of juice. Uh, we use apple, ginger, lemon, and wheat grass juice and spilna tablets. Uh, we are serving you at nine, nine o'clock um, fruit salad. Uh, sometimes we are uh, serving with uh, almond milk. Also, yes, this is the our program, growth program, and at uh, at uh, six thirty we are serving you green salad. Uh, every day the green salad is changing, the sauces are changing, everything is changing. And this is the another uh, shot from my camera. Uh, it's a raw spaghetti. It's very tasty and delicious with the sauces. Uh, and uh, in the back side, there, there, there is a uh, flaxseed cracker. And uh, I know uh, maybe it seems from the photograph it le less, but it's because of the angle. Uh, it was very huge and it was very uh, satisfactory for me to, I felt, you know, full after I ate this as a lunch. And it's very nutritious. Let me talk about a little bit. Uh, my diet programs, anti-aging. Let's uh, start with anti-aging diet program. Why we call it anti-aging? Because uh, as you know, the World Health Organization and American Dietetic Associations, they are the uh, main authorities for the uh, deciding which is right, which is not right because of the uh, meta-analysis. And uh, a Mediterranean diet is the uh, most healthiest diet in the world now. And uh, we are, why we call it anti-aging? because the day starts with the anti-aging properties of a juice. We make apple, almond, ginger plus collagen juice together. Um, and we are adding some psyllium husk inside for the increasing the fiber amount of the uh, juice. And very balanced, very nutritious. Um, a, during the day, you are getting three meals and three snacks. Uh, I am arranging the uh, macros and micros, everything, uh, according to the client here after our consultation. Um, it's anti-inflammatory because of the, we use mostly raw materials. We use olive oil, turmeric, omega-3 fatty acids in the program, collagen, I told you, uh, as a bone broth and as a, like a very good brand of uh, collagen powder. And this is the uh, another shots from my phone. Uh, this is uh, the in the right side is the we call it lettuce burger, uh, low carb burger, and also it's very nutritious inside. I don't prefer to uh, serve red meat, but I prefer to serve the uh, uh, fish. As you know, we we are a Mediterranean country, so we mostly serve fish, and it's an exception for our uh, one of our. Uh, uh, lunch and this is our uh, go, um, artichoke with the uh, guacamole sauce. Uh, it's another dinner option for. Uh, I mean, it it may give you inspiration to you what we are serving here. And this is another shot from my kitchen. Uh, it's the basil, cashew, and olive oil uh, sauce. Uh, and a raw spaghetti with some cherry tomatoes. And this is the program uh, of us, um, anti-aging uh, 
Sustainability uh, anti-aging uh, uh, diet program and the timetable, uh, breakfast, snacks, lunch, snacks, evening meal, and again snacks. Snacks are uh, sometimes optional according, I am arranging according to client, uh, according to the calorie needs. Uh, the alkaline water, detox broth, and herbal teas are allowed. And um, actually, um, you know, our guests who comes here has a coffee addiction or something. I gave just one coffee per day in this program according to the clients. Uh, we are doing everything here in client-based according to their health. Uh, so every every day we are together with them in the lunch dinners every 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 moment we are talking we are giving some uh, raw food workshops we are making uh, we are doing some uh, life uh, life transition seminars together we are watching movie movies together the about the healthy life and um, yes let me talk about a little bit. Uh, other another signature program because this ketogenic program is very special to CNG because uh, when we look the uh, all over the world they are doing um, the ketogenic program very animal uh, animal fat based uh, this program is plant plant oil I mean oil based healthy oil based program but it's also very uh, satisfactory because it's very fulfilling and, uh, and our guests are consuming lots of fiber during the program so it's not just an ordinary ketogenic program it's very different um, unfortunately I couldn't put some uh, photographs in the uh, slides uh, I will show you later but uh, I can send you the detailed information uh, to your email uh, as is in different slides um, yes a ketogenic diet is a kind of diet which limits the carbohydrate uh, consumption like under 50 grams. Um, yeah, yes, uh, I am arranging the uh, old macros uh, when in our consultation, but no breads, no legumes, um, uh, just a small amount of fruits are allowed like strawberry, uh, berry family, um, raspberry, blueberry I am serving and we are making lots of deserts with the uh, uh, with some in ingredients, almond flour with or coconut flour. We are making lots of different recipes with them. Um, I can send another, I told you, uh, another word document or PowerPoint. Uh, it's the meal schedule for, uh, for the guests. Yes, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, yes. Uh, the snacks are optional because the uh, the main meal is very satisfactory. They don't need to uh, take the snack sometimes, but they are optional. Uh, what is the main purpose of this program? I want my guests to stay at least 14 nights this program because it's we see the results in long term, uh, but uh, very quickly, long term, but very quickly uh, from the first day, because um, yes, uh, the body is getting into the ketosis state like three or four four days, and basically uh, burning the fat very suddenly and you know very efficiently. Uh, who has a carbohydrate craving issue, and they are beating the carbohydrate craving. Uh, uh, issue with this program also um, and what we do here also we do the ketone test for them then we start the program after a few days later we, uh, we do this ketone test together to check their ketone level and um, the uh, during the day alkaline water detox Detox growth and herbal teas are also uh, served in the abundance but um, as, as I told you, uh, the initial consultation is very important, uh, me with, and the client, because uh, according to their health status, if they have type, type, type 1 diabetes or chronic liver disease or kidney disorders, we are deciding to do different things in here, except from the ketogenic diet. According to the health issue, I uh, recommend specific things, treatments from our center. Uh, we use thermal water for uh, the um, enhancing the program and also we use some treatments, some massages here, some uh, other special treatments, uh, prestotherapy, ozone sauna, infrared sauna. We are combining all of them for uh, uh, according to our aim for weight loss or liver cleans, whatever. Um, so uh, for the further questions, I will be on your service. You can send me an email. I can...
answer them. Um, and also I can share with you if you want uh, some uh, ketogenic recipes or also uh, the um, uh, photographs from Sianji. Yes, nice to meet you. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for the slides, yes. I am Dr. Suleiman from Colon International Hospital and bone marrow transplanter and hematologist. We have good hospital and A plus hospital uh, in Istanbul. In bone marrow transplant unit, every time need uh, A plus hospital. A plus hospital is A plus hospital necessary in all clinic situation, all laboratory examination needed. Uh, who need for the transplantation in Turkey uh, indication? Patient by, with a diagnosis of the acute and chronic leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, some solid tumor or cancer, aplastic anemia, neurodysplastic syndrome, and thalassemia and some other metabolic disorders, other uh, treatment refractor diseases. Bone marrow trans during the bone marrow transplantation, all the bone marrow transplant patients necessary evaluated and full lab and body examination and also allergen transplantas, transplantation needed HLA examination. If it is suitable for the transplantation and all this transfer, this situation, patient is informed about the procedure to be performed and chose for the transplant patients. In our hospital, bone marrow transplant unit is do all transplantation procedure. Generally, for Turkish citizen and foreign national. And besides the transplant success rate, we are and, uh, 97% is big answer for yours, is success rate is very good for us and for, for the world. Uh, how can I get the stem cell and which one uh, source we, uh, do we use it? And uh, stem cell collection and uh, how do I uh, get the stem cell? And firstly, in autologous and allergenic and syngenic from the brother and sister, and unrelated and uh, mismatch and haplogenic transplantation, and sometimes refractor patients needed CAR T cell treatment. And the experimental, experimental side, and sometimes we use it stem cell engineering for. Uh, mesenchymal stem cell transplantation and dentific cell transplantation, mostly for the GVHD, the most the GVHD, the Grad versus host disease procedure. Uh, which one we, do we use this uh, source for the stem cell? Uh, hundred per one hundred percent and bone marrow directly. Uh, collecting bone marrow, and mostly we use the peripheral blood cell. 
and uh, from the bone marrow bank, cord blood, and from the lab, embryonic stem cell, and fetal liver and fetal bone marrow, all of this experimental uh, situation for the laboratory. This is hemopoietic stem cell chart and cascade for the uh, primary stem cell and, and after ended uh, neutrophil, thrombocyte, and astrocyte. You know this mostly. I know that the stem cell is uh, transform the somatic stem cell. For example, the, for example, for the stomach, so, uh, somatic stem cell and dermatologic stem cell and enterocyte and fatty cell and uh, chondrocyte, endothelial cell, neuronal cell, astrocyte and liver cell, etc. We know this. Stem cell transform all somatic cell. Uh, perfect stem cell, we use the mostly perfect stem cell in for bone marrow. Uh, normally, it's in bone marrow side, uh, stem cell is one, uh, 100, 1% for the uh, bone marrow. And perfect stem cell, 1001 uh, perfect stem cell, we have it all this body. Uh, for the autologous stem cell collection, and we needed mobilization. For the mobilization, we use this chemotherapy cytokine in autologous transplantation patients. Uh, after mobilization time, approximately 10 and 15 days, uh, collecting peripheric stem cell, collect, collecting for, for peripheric stem cell by the locophoresis and aphoresis machine. This is uh, aphoresis machine and set and aphoresis bed. This area is aphoresis area. Bone marrow transplantation, mostly autologous, allergenic, the subtype, myoablative, non-myoablative, and unrelated, we say that. And you know this, uh, many internet site uh, comment this experimental stem cell transplantation. And uh, maybe next time, next 20 and 10 years after, Maybe spare part, use it. And allergen transplantation, for example, first we, we will uh, start TBI or some chemo approximately three days, 10 days, sometimes 15 days, and start at minus 10, minus seven, etc. like this uh, table. Zero day is transplanted day. For the allergen transplantation, uh, we, on the other side, uh, we will prepare some donor, brother and sister, and other donor, allergenic and unrelated donor. We need it uh, prepare, to prepare uh, for the stem cell. Autologous transplant, and if he if he patient if he needed if if the patient needed chemo and uh, started chemo and cytokine, sometimes rem in the remission uh, for the autologous transplantation only we use cytokine. This table is chemo plus cytokine. And uh, approximately chemo and cytokine, 50, after 15 days, uh, we collect 
and uh, after the only one uh, cytokine we, we uh, if if i use this uh, after five days we collect stem cell in summary hem hemopoietic stem cell transplantation clinical indication hematologic diseases all malign and some benign hematologic uh, diseases and immunoproliferative patients, acute leukemia, current leukemia, many patients for the hematologic diseases, if it is malignant site. And solid tumor, mostly we use uh, solid tumor and refract some refractor uh, patients needed CAR T cell treatment, some childhood solid tumor. Uh, you know this con congenital immune deficiency status situation and some metabolic diseases like uh, uh, Gaucher diseases, uh, mostly major hemoglobinopathy and, and some automotive uh, autoimmune diseases, for example, systemic lupus erythematosus and some Antiphospholytic syndrome in for the treatment refractor to, to, to refractor to the treatment for autoimmune diseases and other this experimental ones maybe every time change this situation and some neurologic diseases some other diseases uh, this is is uh, very uh, good situation. Uh, sometimes we collected apparatus product for the autologous transplantation, some, sometimes allergen transplantation, uh, uh, some special site, this is, is this, this area, is uh, collecting, collecting stem cell and uh, storage, uh, we uh, send the storage area, in the storage area, in, 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 in you know this uh, stem cell uh, for centigrade is 72 hours storage only 72 but in the uh, liquid nitrogen it's uh, endless in this area is uh, liquid nitrogen area Cell engineering, all experimental area for the stem cell. Uh, sometimes uh, some people use this ischemic heart diseases, peripheric, some patient, refractor patient is peripheric vascular diseases, some neurologic diseases. You know that this area all now experimental. And oncologic disease as well, some treatment restriction we have, but more vaccine and CAR T cell treatment, now we use this, some refractor oncologic patients. Uh, maybe you know, maybe next time in, in, in uh, 10 years, after 10 years, 20 years, I don't know now, but is very quick procedure and very quickly uh, follow it. And stem cell and the spare part, you know this, is uh, uh, nine, 1980 is bone marrow transplantation, say experimental but is now classical treatment. Maybe after 10 years, stem cell is may make spare part. Okay? Thank you for joining us. If any question, please ask uh, the center and email, etc. Thank you.
So let's let me share my screen with you and right. then proceed accordingly. Lovely. Excuse me, just a moment, please. Stop video participants. Excellent. More sound optimize. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, uh this is our hospital view and uh, uh, my email is below the name of the hospital is Ankara memorial hospital and i'm going to speak about my experience with femto laser assisted cataract surgery with digital navigation oh, i'm sorry okay let's move ahead okay can we can we reach refractive goals in cataract surgery this is a basic question I'm going to discuss with you through the whole presentation. There are two answers. If yes, then how are we going to achieve a refractive goal that will make patients very happy? And if no, then why we cannot do this to our patients? This is crucial. We cannot reach our, the goal in refractive cataract surgery in general due to residual reflective errors, inflammation, and ocular surface problems. We know that these issues should be solved so that we can have a very good, reliable result that will make both the surgeon and the patient very happy. At World Health Organization's website gave us, gives us a clue about what's going on all around the world. And the refractive solutions are offered to less than 15% of cataract surgery patients, according to World Health Organization. Less than 3% of all cataract surgeries are performed as femtocataract. All over the world, only 13% of cataract cases can get treatment they need. So, it seems as though we are far from perfect. In the Eureka, which is an organization carried out by European society, Eureka registration system it gives us an idea about 1 million cases operated by the European surgeons. 70% of eyes showed one diopter deviation. Refractive deviation is higher, especially in short eyes. Among 17% of cases in 70,000, almost 7,500 patients with corneal astigmatism, metropia was targeted in 78% of the eyes. However, it could not be achieved in 52% of the cases. In 43% of cases, one diopter or less astigmatism was detected. So, in summary, we are really very far from perfect. So, what we need? Advanced precision surgery with manual applications nowadays is not feasible. You have to do biometry, transcription, planning, marking, cytotorsion, surgically induced astigmatism, you have to consider surgically induced astigmatism. You have to do a very well centered, very well centered and good overlapping capsule axis and you have to position the IOL and you have to optimize the outcome. These are the points when you perform a manual surgery, these are the points, potential points of failure in this process. So there are so many unknowns, those should be carried out and you must be very pre precise. So we have to mention briefly what the limitations in classical cataract surgery are. Security is 10 times less than the LASIK surgery. Predictability of the results are half of the less predictability distance which actually is half of the predictability of LASIK surgery. Astigmatism correction is limited. Presbyopia correction is limited. Effective IOL detection is almost impossible when you are doing a classical cataract surgery. So, there are a few points that I have to mention about why there are limitations. First of all, when you're performing corneal incision, uh, the classical surgery is not optimized and it has an impact on the induced cylinder and the safety is 
or another crucial point that I have to mention. Capsurexis with the current surgery is variable sized, not centered well. This has an impact of variable IOL position and effective lens foot power. Lens fragmentation is the third part which has an effect on the final outcome and excessive ultrasound power, delayed visual recovery, and loss of animal cells and capsule rupture should be the keywords to be mentioned. Refractive cataract surgery has certain steps. You have to prepare the patient with biometry, ocular surface evaluation, information control, and you have to check for the systemic problems of the patient, namely prostate, diabetes, hypertension, and many others. Intraocular lens selection are variable and you can choose between single to three-piece lenses to monovision to multifocality. Surgical technique depends on extra capsular surgery and depending on the patient's eye and mainly extra capsular cataract phaco, femtofaco or femtofaco plus variant sport of femtofaco may be the choice. Post-op treatment and follow-up of these cases should be very precisely carried out. Surgical preparation, ocular biometry, and of course the back of the eye, fundus preparation are the crucial parts of the surgery. We nearly always perform a corneal tomography. We nearly always perform an OCT of the macula, and sometimes we perform the OCT of the disc. And we take our biometric measurements with the last star with the newest uh, software. In, in the past, we knew that posterior corneal astigmatism has an effect on the final outcome. Unfortunately, with the shine fluke technology, posterior radius of the curvature cannot be measured accurately in all conditions. This is a deprivation for, of the outcome. So we, we are using Barrett torque calculator to get hold of the best option to treat astigmatism and of course best power to put into the eye. When you are going to put this lens in the eye, you need some surgical tools to find out to find out whether you are putting this lens correctly into position. And you need a kind of surgical guide. And this surgical guide in our case is Varian image guided system. It not only helps us to put the lens just in, on the visual axis, but it also helps us to put the lens, if there is a toric one, on the correct visual axis. Well, I will, I'm very proud to share this picture with you. The first intercular lens for the treatment of cataract was implanted by Sir Harold Ridley at St. Thomas Hospital on the 8th of February, 1950. And this picture is in Denmark in 1987, and Harold Ridley is accompanied by myself. And I always take this picture as a, a honor of knowing Mr. Harold Ridley. So, Sir Harold Ridley introduced us the first IOL, and since then we have a bench of intraocular lenses, starting with the foldable ones, adding filters, adding toric correction, and adding also multifocality. And nowadays, of course, accommodation is another fruitful uh, approach that we can see in the very near future what we are going to get. There are certain lenses that are in the market that may help us to see both near, intermediate distance, and distance. There are lots of them, and we just choose the best one, the best option, to, depending on the uh, diagnostic outcome of the specific patient. 
we do not implant one lens to everybody, but we choose the correct lens so that it will fit to that person's eye so that patient can get a very good visual outcome. It may be, intraocular selection may be, as I said, one, one piece, you can have a monovision outcome or you can use a multifocal lens as you see here. Recent meta-analysis of peer-reviewed publications revealed evidence of high levels of patient satisfaction in general. The spectacle independent was 80% or more, 90% of for distance vision, 100% for intermediate vision, and 70% for near vision. This is an outstanding outcome with the present lenses if they are chosen correctly for the specific patient. Of course, this picture shows us what we are, what kind of vision at the end of the day the patient will get. And we just describe this patient and also we get feedback from the patient how the patient may benefit from the, from the implantation of this lens. Nowadays, we are using a new technology called Vivier Visual Behavior Monitor. This Vivier Monitor is a fully documents the way one uses the real world visual system. We put this system on the patient with eyeglasses on the patient's eye and try to find out how the patient is using his or her eye during the day. And in this slide, a defocus curve graph left here in the left shows that this patient performs most of his visual tasks by imaging distance between 0.4 to 1 meters. So this is also in the right, we see that um, this patient uh, also has 61% uh, uh, of the patient's vision occurs in good lighting conditions and 70% in mesopic conditions and 22% under scotopic conditions. In this patient, if a monofocal IOL is implanted targeting emetropia, and then he will not use glasses for 8% of the day and will require glasses for the medium and close tasks for 90% of the day. So at the end of the day, even if you do a perfect surgery with a monofocal IOL and with a emetropia target, still this patient will not benefit from the surgery as it is, it is expected. Well, I will now switch again to very an image guided system that really eliminates the potential errors in surgical st steps. We take the patient's image with accurate biometry and auto data uploading. We plan the surgery and after the planning, we have another unit in the operating theater that will guide us to make cartilage construction IOL positioning, surgical optimization. So this result-oriented surgery comes out with outstanding outcomes. Variant surgical planner, this is the picture you get first. You make your decision where you're going to put your incisions, where you are going to, if you're going to correct astigmatism by corneal incisions. And of course, it also, evaluates the corneal astigmatism, which is a very good benefit. And this is the digital marker in the operating theater. This operating theater in the, with the digital marker, you get the patient on the bed and you adjust where you are going to sit. And then you just make your uh, locations of the incisions and apparently you have this size of the capstrixes that's shown here, and you, you decide your way of centration, whether it will be on visual axis or with the thimbus, whatever it is, it's your, up to your decision. So, and then this is the picture on the patient's eye. We have this kind of appearance, and this shows where the incisions are, these are the landmarks where you are going to have this surgery. So, and 
at the end of the surgery, Berion shows us exactly where we are going to put this lens with regard to centration, plus the axis of the lens is going to be plotted. Well, what is new then? Is it really worth? Berion Digital Surgery Guide femtosecond laser technology reduces error rates and allows surgery in sharp margins. This improves clinical outcomes, which is very, very important. And apparently, you can get extremely sensitive corneal incisions, capsulexis, nuclear fragmentation, intraocular lens placement. And, but of course, this technology has some drawbacks, financial problems, long learning curve, and complications that could threaten the vision. This is a system we are using. This is a Lensex system. We get the picture here and we evaluate the patient's eye and then we execute. Another point that you have to mention is active fluidics. Active fluidics is something that we are using with the Centurion FACO device. The question was, can we keep the anterior chamber stable? Can it help control inflammation? Yes, if you don't keep the anterior chamber stable, you cannot keep the, uh, you cannot have a full control on the final inflammation control. So fluid control, active fluidics system just match to each other so that you can have a very stable anterior chamber and the final outcome of the surgery becomes brilliant. Nowadays, we are using another tool called Active Sentry, where the anterior chamber maintenance is controlled via sensors at the handpiece. As the incision becomes smaller, fluid flow into the eye is limited, even if FACO parameters are modified. This reduces the surgical efficiency. So, in a gravity system, in, the, in many of these surgical systems, FACO systems, the higher the bottle raised, the higher the intercular pressure will become. And the risk of performing FACO at higher intercular pressure, you will definitely get endothelial cell damage, optic nerve damage, deterioration of retinal corneal perfusion, and you are operating, if you put your bottle at a height of 100 centimeters, you are operating under a pressure of 74 millimeters of mercury, which is unbelievably high. So, with a femtosecond nuclear fragmentation, you can effectively dis disassemble the nucleus, protect the posterior capsule, and apparently you can control the FACO time and corneal endothelium. Femtosecond nuclear fragmentation safety is simply because you are decreasing the FACO energy, reducing the FACO time, less endothelial cell damage, and may reduce potential for inflammation and corneal burns. This is how we are executing the surgery. We are, with the variant planner, we make our decision how we are going to make the surgery. Now we are putting our, uh, we are putting our incision. Now it's the capsule uh, real time OCT. We uh, just find out whether our target is okay. Now this is the real time OCT of the lens and we adjust where we are going to fragment. And in this case, we plan to make limbal relaxing incisions and we adjust also that one. And here we are now adjusting the incision Now, we put the incision at the desired place and also the limbal relaxing incision is localized properly. When we set everything properly, then Okay. 
We set it every bits and pieces. It's now over. Now, let's see what's happening when we adjust. The capsular axis is made. Now the fragmentation is carried out. And astigmatic incisions are made. And finally, the incision we are going to enter, the eye is prepared. Now the treatment is complete. And this is, these are the parameters we are using to remove the fragmented material. And this is this case I will show share with you how we are putting a lens that has both toric capacity and multifocality. We remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior surface of the lens and posterior surface of the lens. And we remove all the viscoelastic and then we put the lens As you see, there are marks on the lens. We put this on in accordance with the line Varian is showing us. We call this digital, digital navigation system. So, if you are performing a manual surgery, we call this test a point spread function test. And we take also make a multi uh, uh, point spread function test and MTF values of this test, uh, the graphics of the MTF values are clearly seen. And with a manual test, the patient sees like this. And with the laser, with the same lens, the patient has a visual acuity like this, which is more controlled, more precise. And modulation transfer function test also graphic shows us a very smooth, very smooth graphics that shows us that the patient has a very good outcome. Treatment is also crucial and you have to use good antibiotics, non steroid anti-inflammatoires and steroids to achieve good refractive result for three weeks. Refractive cataract surgery, there has always been discussions whether to switch to Ike to Ike, Ike to Peko, uh, and many other technologies always have some kind of resistance. Now, Feco to variant guided femtofeco is the choice. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often, says Winston Churchill. Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I'm Ayşe uh, from uh, guest uh, from Coral Thermal Resort Clinic and Spa Hotel. Uh, now I start my presentation. Uh, our hotel is Coral uh, Thermal Resort Hotel Health Hotel of Turkey. 
it was opened in September uh, 2006. It's located at the inter intersection point of Ankara, Izmir, Istanbul and Antalya, 13 kilometers away from Afyon City Center. Uh, thousands, twenty, uh, hundred and twenty thousand uh, square meters open area and uh, fifteen thousand square meters closed area, forty five kilometers away from the far airport. Uh, Coral Thermal has uh, three hundred twenty nine rooms and uh, six hundred sixty eight beds. And there are nine types of rooms. Uh, this is standard room. This is corner seat room. Terrace suite is our family room. Junior suite. Um, entertainment and animation, uh, animation shows uh, in night and day, live music, billiards, uh, table tennis, bowling, gym, vitamin bar, country house, uh, children's club, arcade, shopping stores, wat water slides, children's pools, lobby bar, tea time, library and games rooms. It's designed to make the most of your leisure time. Plant wellness, two outdoor swimming pools, women and mixed area for indoor indoor swimming pools, for thermal pools, for spa treatments, children's pool, water slice gym, aromatherapy center, and uh, uh, provide family bed. This is our spa centers. And we made uh, we make mud bed, plant beds. Hydrators, ozone cabin, climbing cures, and aromatherapy centers, uh, therapeutic vegetable flower oils, treatmental and uh, physical imbalances, pro protect the health of and fitness of the body. Uh, aromatherapy is a natural product, relaxes, freshness, nourish, nourishes the skin, helps treatment. Uh, our hotels, uh, the most uh, important uh, department is Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation Center. Uh, the Gene Health Complex consisting of spent clinic is uh, built on an area of 4,000 uh, meters square meters. Specialists, physiotherapists and nurses make miraculous treatments with the magical power of the thermal water. Uh, these are some diseases traced in our clinic, especially rheumatic diseases and move, uh, movement, the sources, loss of body, body functions, especially orthopedic rehabilitation, neurologic rehabilitation, hand rehabilitation. Uh, this rehabilitation after hand Insures and or operations, reputations for past disabled children and for uh, sports injured. This machine is high back isokinetic unit. Uh, muscle uh, weaknesses are detected and treated with isokinetic uh, exercise system. Uh, the isokinetic exercise system is used in joint contracts, frozen shoulder after orthopedic surgery and in sports injury. And uh, decompression therapy, the world state of the art spinal, uh, spinal decompression traction device provides uh, percent 89 success in the non-surgical treatment of waist and neck hernia. Yeah, it cures back, waist and neck pains by uh, reducing the pressure on the body. And ozone cure uh, by strengthening the immune system, headache, uh, dyspnea and migraine, in chronic uh, fatigue, fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, uh, asthma, allergy, bronchitis, diabetes, and circulatory system diseases. 
and as a complementary treatment for many diseases. Uh, ozone curies um, painkiller effects for all um, problems. And uh, PRP, uh, it means uh, platelet rich plasma. Uh, PRP therapy is a new method that has been used especially in the treatment of various diseases in recent years. Uh, the material uses the method of repeat from the patient's own blood. It is a natural treatment method in which diseases is uh, PRP used, calcification, arthros, any kind of car uh, cartilage damage, any kind of tendon damage uh, such as tennis elbow, in chronic wound healing, cosmetic applications, dental implants, uh, cardiovascular surgeon, and uh, the other department of our hotels. Um, there is a main restaurant, one a la carte restaurant, five bars, lobby bar, vitamin bar, orient cafe, cottage, similar banquet and conference rooms. Here is the, our meeting rooms, equipment with the license technology banquet area features. This is in G salon for um, 1,200 people. And left, left side is uh, Amber salon for uh, nine people, 900 people. Crystal salon, uh, 550 people. And the meeting rooms are equipped with uh, eight advanced technology products and are designed with different options from 50 to uh, 400 person people. They are ideal for all organizations. Yes, finished. Thank you for you. <laughs> Hello to everyone from the sunny northern Cyprus. When we are, oopsie, I'm sorry, start again from the beginning. Hello from the sunny Cyprus to you all. First of all, I wish uh, you a nice presentation watch um, and thank you for your attendance. When we are choosing something and researching about it, we ask actually five W's and one H to ourselves, which are where, who, what, why, when, and how questions. If we are relieved with the answers, then we choose. That's what we do, that's what the companies do, and that's what the patients do actually. So let's start. Where is Northern Cyprus? Northern Cyprus is on a beautiful island just at the connection of the continents Europe, Asia and Africa, just in the middle. So it's close to everywhere. The island country is well known with its paradise beaches, warm sun and full comfort and peaceful accommodation and holiday options, which makes it a perfect choice for health tourism. There are direct flights from all Europe Russia and Arabian Peninsula to the island from uh, various airports. And there are also cheaper flights over Turkey to the island as well. So the next question is who? Who are the Northern Cypriots? The island is a mixture of cultures combining Oriental and modern culture. 
The history of Northern Cyprus is a cultural mixture of English, Ottoman, Turkish, Arabic, Italian, French, Byzantine, and Greek ancestry. So that's why the Cypriot population is very hospitable and has a very helpful, helpful nature. Uh, because of many universities that accept students from all over the world in the island, the population is used to the non-Cypriot community as well. The Cypriot people mostly talk English pretty well because of the history. And although Turkish and Cypriot cuisine dominates the culinary culture, there are restaurants and markets belonging to every culture in our country. What do we offer? There are 15 actively running IVF centers in Northern Cyprus, located as one university hospital IVF centers, this IVF center, which is the nearest university that I work at, four hospital-based IVF centers and 10 boutique IVF centers are occupied. The, in Northern Cyprus, we are authorized to do every type of donation IVF program, such as the oocyte donation, the sperm or the embryo donations, the surrogacy treatments, the conventional IVF treatments, the ICSI procedures, the sperm microchipping, the sperm sorting, and pre-implantation genetical screening of chromosomes, genes, or genetical sequencing in our university hospital as well. That's why we can do everything. Why Northern Cyprus? That's an important question because that's the question when the patient starts to think about a place and wants to get convinced, as we all know. First of all, we should say, state that the first thing is the success. The patients look at success in the first line, as we all know. We proudly can present the pregnancy success above the European standards for our patients. For example, in our site donation treatments, we have a pregnancy success rate over, six, over 60 to 70 percent in a single attempt. Since we can provide our patients with a good number and quality of oocytes, our patients almost always have the higher quality embryos that we can freeze, so we can offer a much more economical treatment compared to the other countries. And we can keep our cumulative success rate about 90%, which is a miracle actually. In our treatments where we can obtain the oocyte from the patient, we ensure the highest performance of the patient as tailor-based since we act with the most accurate and patient-specific treatment, uh, treatment uh, principles. Also, innovation and technology is important as well. The patients ask for that as well. They want to get the best technology. In Northern Cyprus units, we use the latest technology that enables us to keep the pregnancy success rates high. And we can offer all services to our couples who need additional treatment without waiting list, which is very important. Not only that, also donation programs are especially being asked a lot. We can do all type of donation treatments legally. In all donation treatments, we don't have a waiting list, which is a huge problem in some countries. Um, in the selection process of our donors, we use high standards for donor acceptance. For example, we combine both the HFEA, ASHRA and ASRM uh, recommendations and using many genetic screenings, infectious disease screenings, including COVID-19 in the recent situation, psychological evaluation, and we provide the service above the world standards with, with our selected donors. Also, as the majority of our donors are the university students, we can provide not only good quality oocytes, but also precise genetic bases that are important to the patients as well. For the sperm donors, we get our donor sperms from fully certified sperm banks throughout the Europe. We have the donor anonymity and 100% confidentiality. This is important for the patients as well when they are doing donor treatments or sometimes in conventional IVF treatments as well. The patient wants to be sure about what she is getting or what they are getting. 
In Northern Cyprus, there is complete anonymity law for all site and sperm donations. That's why we are obligated to keep the records of the patient and donor matches in archives to be evaluated only in medical need and to guarantee that the patient and the donor remain completely anonymous to each other under the protection of the law. So actually we are doing it silently. So the patient does not know the donor and the donor does not know the patient, which is a huge problem in some countries as well, which is not a problem in Northern Cyprus. What else? Why we choose the Northern Cyprus? We can perform various genetic analysis, chromosome evaluations, such as including the X and Y chromosome, specific genetic screenings or total genome sequencing up on the patient's request. And we get the reliable results very quickly, not like in six months time. So the patient does not lose time. That's the important part. Also, as there is no marriage obligation, so there is no requirement for the marriage of the couples, if they exist as couples, we don't seek marriage conditions, so we can easily offer treatment to non-married couples, to single patients, and of course, to the LGBTI community as well. Other than that, the patients sometimes ask the budget as well. That's also an important part. There are options for every budget and treatment costs are approximately half or one third of the similar treatments in Europe or Asia when compared. The patient satisfaction is something else than the success. It's important because the success is the pregnancy, is the baby, but satisfaction is more than that. It's the baby and maybe the pregnancy, but also the patient turning to her own home country um, happy. That's the important thing. Not only before or during the treatment, but also after the treatment, we keep in touch with our patients and continue to provide the support and consultation services according to the need. And also, as uh, we are combining the holiday and the treatment together, um, the patient is satisfied as they also have the holiday, the stress factor is minimized, which is very, very important in IVF treatments to achieve the pregnancy. And also the patients may sometimes wish not tell, wish not tell uh, to uh, their parents or their families about uh, their treatments. Also, this little uh, hiding island keeps the secret and the patient can have the treatment as well as the holiday and turn back to their home country pregnant. When to come? Before finishing, I may say that our patients may treat, uh, receive their pre-treatment consultations free of charge. So we do the consultations um, in professional guidance and programs online and complete the treatments operational part in Northern Cyprus. Or sometimes the patients may want to pass the whole treatment procedure here, so they're more than welcome. So minimum up to the treatment option they are choosing, three to eight days accommodation is enough for all the treatments actually. How to contact? We have our university, the hospitals and the IVF centers. They all have accessible websites. Each center also offers direct contact options for the patients as well as the companies assisting the patients, of course. We're also able to do audio or video conferencing via internet or make direct phone calls for dis discussing our patients' medical conditions and or uh, treatment options, of course. Almost all centers have patient coordinators talking English, Russian, Arabic, and many other languages fluently. Actually, there is no um, other way not choosing Northern Cyprus in IVF treatments, because in Northern Cyprus, we're not doing all the treatments. We are doing 
IVF. That's why we are doing it perfect. Thank you for listening. Please do not hesitate to schedule BMB uh, meetings at the platform about anything you need to learn. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining our fourth edition Turkish Medical uh, Tourism and Healthcare Travel Congress and uh, Exhibition. Uh, we were very glad hosting you uh, during this period. And uh, today is our last day of webinars, but still tomorrow. Uh, our B2B uh, will continue that we give you the chance even in the weekend that you can do a schedule, a B2B with our uh, exhibitors and our exhibitors also can reschedule uh, their uh, meetings with our visitors uh, for weekend as well. Uh, we're going to be continue, but uh, this is going to be my a closing speech because uh, I would like to personally, as Turkish Healthcare Travel Council founding chairman, on behalf of my council, on behalf of my uh, Turkish participant and the Turkish government, I would like to thank to all of you, uh, sparing your valuable time, uh, trying to integrate uh, to our uh, platform and uh, online exhibition in order to build win-win uh, cooperation with our uh, participants, with our exhibitors, uh, clinics, travel agencies, uh, thermal resort and spa and wellness uh, resort. I hope that uh, it was fruitful uh, to all of you, this uh, organization. Uh, we aim it to introduce uh, Poland, uh, Romania and Moldova, the Turkish uh, supplier and uh, healthcare service uh, provider. Uh, I hope that we uh, could succeed uh, a little bit during this uh, online uh, era pandemic period. Uh, before we were coming as offline to many tourism exhibition and uh, health exhibition, we have a uh, possibility to meet offline, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, there is some limitation of travel. And that's why we try to organize this online uh, exhibition and webinars in order to still keep in touch with you and still uh, try to uh, develop and uh, increase the collaboration between our countries in order to serve our citizens who are suffering from different diseases or who are looking for higher standard and quality with affordable prices as Turkey destination. We are providing high quality services in healthcare and affordable prices comparing to, to European uh, other uh, destination and uh, competitors. Uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your valuable time and I hope that you could uh, build uh, good collaboration and we are always at your service 24 uh, hours. Uh, you can reach us by emails, by our contact details. Uh, you can visit our website, Turkish Healthcare Travel Council website, thtdc.org and uh, if you are willing to be uh, in your region, a uh, representative of Turkish Healthcare Travel Council, please write to us. Uh, let's communicate and uh, to exchange our agreement condition. Uh, I hope that you could build also some partnership with our travel agencies and facilitators, all the, also the clinics and uh, hospitals. Uh, you have the op opportunity to collaborate with them or you have the opportunity to be our representative in your region and you represent Turkish Healthcare Travel Council as a network office and you refer patient through our channels to our member of council uh, from uh, hospitals and clinics, uh, thermal resort and spa centers. It is up to your choice to 
uh, to work in which channel we have uh, different options. That's why we are uh, inviting all those exhibitors uh, who are with us during this exhibition in order to increase and in order to introduce to each other to give you more alternative choice on cooperation uh, with other uh, channels as well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for this uh, opportunity. I'm very uh, delighted and glad to meeting you and hope that after pandemic to meet you face-to-face, uh, -face, offline, maybe in coming March at Historex uh, Health and Sport Alternative Tourism Exhibition and Congress, going to be offline. Hopefully we will uh, meet you there and our offices could able to also to invite some of you as our buyer and the hosted guests uh, to this exhibition as well. You will hear from us uh, soon from our offices. Uh, they will contact you definitely that uh, to increase and to start our collaboration also to invite you to Turkey in order that you can see and visit our hospitals in natural uh, position that you can feel the quality, that you can see the uh, standards and technology uh, beside of uh, experienced doctors and uh, high uh, motivated uh, personality in uh, healthcare services. Thank you once again and uh, see you soon either in Turkey or online in our other exhibitions. Thank you.